Hey guys, this is Dave the Software Dev again, and this is going to be my first video regarding Twitter Bootstrap 3.1, which is the current version as of uh, this video taping. Uh, they've made some changes, uh, obviously, since 2.3.2, uh, and I had a line of videos regarding those, but uh, they're kind of out of date now, so I'm going to start with some 3.1 videos. Uh, the very first one I'm going to do is regarding the grid layouts and sort of the built-in responsive um, stuff that's included in Twitter Bootstrap now by default. So what they've added is the capability to define a set of styles on a div that will work similar to how they worked in 2.3.2 uh, as far as spans and, uh, and sizes and 12-point grid and things like that. But uh, they've also made it now to where you can configure how uh, certain in, uh, elements in your HTML will look when the screen size changes. So if you're looking at it on a desktop, it'll look different than it would in mobile, conceivably. Now before this was done by including a responsive uh, plugin to Bootstrap, but now it's included in the default. So without any ado, let's just dive right into it. I've got uh, just a simple HTML document here, and I'm going to start by adding a div, and we're going to add some classes to that div that I'll explain. Okay, so I've added in here a, a div which has a class of navbar, uh, and it's also got a visible-xs class on it. So what this is saying is this entire div will be visible only on extra small screens. Uh, such as a uh, such as a phone. So inside of there, I've got a navbar header, and I have a button here with three spans in it that's going to sort of create the little toggle button that uh, that people are used to seeing uh, when they're looking at uh, a menu. Beneath that, I've got another div uh, which has a class of collapse and navbar collapse, and this one has an ID on it that is tied to by the data target of our button here this uh, navbar collapse one with a toggle of collapse. Uh, that tells uh, Bootstrap to basically collapse or expand this div whenever that button is clicked. Inside of that I've got a regular old navbar with a couple of uh, list items in it and this is meant to look like a menu would look on a small device. So let's take a look at that. So I've got that page open now and there's not a whole lot to look at. There's absolutely nothing visible. So why is that? I actually set this thing to be visible only on extra small screens, which would be similar to a, uh, a phone screen or something of that nature. So if I take this browser window and I reduce the size, once it hits that threshold of a the resolution that a phone would have, you get our little nav bar and there are our nav items. Pulling up, there was no change in HTML. All I did was resize the screen. So as your screen size grows, this is the extra small, you'll have additional visible elements for small, medium, large. Okay, so let's add a little more functionality to this. I'm going to add an additional div, and I'm going to give it a fluid container class. Because we're going to have this expand to fill out the, the entire uh, screen area. To use that, I'm going to have a div inside of it with a row fluid because we still have that container and row functionality that existed in Bootstrap 2.3.2. So here's where it's going to get interesting. Okay, so inside of my fluid row, I've added a div which actually has several rather cryptically named um, uh, classes on it. <laughs> the first one is telling it that on a large screen, which is what this LG stands for, I want this div to have a span of four, which uh, in the other version of Bootstrap, we would have had a span four on there, but we would have had no good way to tell it to only do it on large screens. On a medium screen, I also want it to have a span four, meaning it'll use four grid spaces. And on a small screen, I want it to have a span of four, but on an extra small screen, I want it to be completely hidden. So extra small again would be like a, a phone or, or a device like this. Small would be a phone that might be in landscape mode. Medium might be a tablet device. And uh, large might be a, a full desktop. So you can actually 
via your classes here, control what's visible and also how much of the screen real estate that they'll use. So inside of there, I've got a simple uh, list of uh, pills, uh, which just have sort of a duplication of my, uh, my menu up there. Now beneath that, I've got some actual content here. And what I'm saying is, on a large screen, I want it to use 8 of the 12 grid spaces. On a medium screen, use 8. On a small screen, use 8. But on an extra small screen, use 12. So what will happen is, as I, in a moment, reduce my screen size, you'll see that it will update itself to fit these sizes as it hits those thresholds. And when it gets down to a small phone size, this content will fill the entire uh, screen. Okay, so here is my uh, content as I had it. So these are the pills, right? And then here is the content. This is how it would be showing on a large screen, on a tablet, perhaps on a phone that's in landscape mode. But as I scroll this down, or resize this down, and I hit that threshold for a phone, you can see that my navigation pills have disappeared because I had them marked as hidden on extra small and my menu has reappeared because it's marked as visible on extra small. So that's how you can sort of create a responsive display simply by setting your, um, your, your classes on your divs. So uh, this was just a quick primer on the responsive that's now built into Bootstrap. Uh, a quick primer on some of the classes. I'm going to have a little bit more definition of the 12-point grid uh, elements in my next video. I kind of assumed here that uh, that you would be familiar with that from the old bootstrap. So thanks for watching and if this helps you please uh, like this video and uh, subscribe to my uh, content. Thanks!